good morning students and welcome to today's class so in the last class we finished with the chapter multiples and factors right so in today's class we'll be starting with a new chapter that is geometry okay so uh, what are a few basics of geometry so you will have studied what are points rays lines line segments correct so what's a point a point is something that gives you a position now if you take a sharp pencil and mark a dot on a paper and name with it with a capital letter any capital letter for example p capital p then that point p is gives you a position okay so point is something that gives you a position then we studied what are uh, when you all know what are rays sorry first we'll see what is a line segment so what's a line segment if you uh, mark two points say a and b okay and you uh, join those two points with a straight line now ab is called a line segment it has two end points a and b it uh, the length of ab can be measured and that length will be the distance between the points a and b okay so that is line segment then coming to ray what is a ray a ray has one end point and on the other side it represents with an arrow which can be extended to any length so a ray is something which has one end point and we cannot measure its length then coming to a line what is a line a line is something which has which does not have any end points it can be extended on both the sides and you cannot measure its length okay so that is a line then uh, you'll know what are types of lines right types of lines are straight lines or curved lines then what are the uh, different types of straight lines different types of straight lines are horizontal lines which are also called as sleeping lines then vertical lines which are also called as what standing lines and lines which are neither standing nor sleeping are called as slanting lines okay so this is a few basics of geometry that you'll have already learned so in today's class we'll be learning what are parallel lines what are perpendicular lines also we'll be studying what are angles okay so first okay so parallel lines lines that are on a plane that never meet okay lines on a plane that never meet and they are always at a same distance apart so if you see here the distance between these two lines is so much it is the same everywhere right it is the same here also it's the same here also it's the same here also so even if you extend these two lines in a straight line of course the uh, as they are only if you increase their length also these two lines will never meet you extend it how much ever you want okay these two lines will never meet and they remain at the same distance every time now for example best line for an uh, parallel example for an parallel line is your railway track your railway track are always parallel they never meet and they are at the same distance apart okay so these are parallel lines then perpendicular lines what are perpendicular lines lines that intersect or cross each other okay cross over at right angles what's the right angle it is a 90 degree angle okay so this is a right angle this will be 90 degree this is also 90 degree this is also 90 sorry let's draw that again so this is 90 degrees angle so when the angle between two lines is 90 degree then it's called as a right angle so when two lines cross each other at a right angle then or intersect each other at a right angle then it is called as perpendicular lines okay so two or more lines are said to be parallel if they do not meet even if they are extended both the ways okay so here pq and rs are parallel lines then lines which meet at a point are called as intersecting lines so lines which intersect or cross over at any point or meet at a point are called as intersecting lines okay sometimes they may need to be extended 
so here if you see uh, here a b and c d are intersecting at o okay here e f and g h if you extend them then they'll meet at this point okay and here in the last figure if you see l m and r s are intersecting sorry okay so here the last figure shows that it uh, it is crossing over at o at an 90 degree angle so these two are perpendicular lines so these are called as perpendicular lines whereas these are don't they don't cross over at a 90 degree or a right angle so these are just intersecting lines but this last is perpendicular lines so lines that intersect each other at an angle of 90 degrees are called as perpendicular lines okay uh, so before we move on to what are angles let's do a quick uh, warm-up activity which is there in your textbook okay so page number 125 in your books first one identify the following okay so what's the first question it has a fixed length but no breadth what has a fixed length but no breadth it is a line correct it is a straight line you can just write line then and it uh, it indicates a position what indicates a position a point indicates a position so for this you can write it as line segment also because it has a fixed length it means it has two end points so it is a line segment okay so second one is a point Then, third one, there are four of these in a rectangle. Four of what are there in a, right, a rectangle? There are straight lines in a rectangle, right? All the edges are straight. So, there are, you can say there are four line segments in a rectangle because they are all of the same length. Then, three-sided closed figure, which is a three-sided closed figure? It is a triangle then it has a beginning point but no end point so what has a beginning point but no end point a ray correct it has one beginning point but no end point then railway tracks represent these we saw parallel lines right so railway track represent parallel lines or you can also say that uh, they represent just lines because they are endless right or they don't meet so it's either lines or parallel lines then what is an instrument used to measure an angle? It is called as a protractor. Then, this angles measure less than 90 degrees. It is called as an acute angle. Last one. Such li lines meet at a point. Which lines meet at a point? They are called as intersecting lines. Correct. Intersecting lines. Okay, so this is question one. Then moving on to question number two. Measure the sides and angles of the figure shown here and fill in the blanks. Okay, so it's not something I can give you answers for. You have to do it on your own. You have to measure the length of AB, BC, AC and angle ABC. That is this angle and angle BCA, this angle and write it here. So do it for your homework. All right. Now, we will move on to see what are angles. So, what is an angle? An angle is defined as the amount of turn between two straight lines that start at a common end point. So, if you see in the figure here, this is a common end point and you have two rays. Okay, instead of telling two straight lines, you can take two rays also. These can be extended to any length. So, and this is the amount of turn. What is the meaning of amount of turn? Now, if you turn this particular horizontal line, till it in uh, overlaps this line okay so you're turning it right so how much it is turning is called as an angle so this is that turn so this is an angle so angles are measured in degrees okay okay so you know that angle is formed when two rays start from the same point so here uh, these two rays are starting from the point o so op and oq are two rays starting from point O. Okay, it is forming the angle P-O-Q. Okay, here O is the vertex. 
and OP and OQ are the arms of angle POQ. So you should know that angle POQ is same whatever its length of its arms are. Okay, you can write it as angle QOP also. It will be same. Now the angle is measured by placing the baseline of the protractor. Okay, on one arm with the center coinciding with the vertex. So you have to keep the baseline of a protractor on O. Okay, such that its uh, baseline is overlapping with one of the sides. Okay, it should be coinciding with the vertex. Now, the value along the other arm gives a measure of the angle in decrease. So, if you keep the baseline of the protractor here, such that it coincides with OQ. Okay, then which uh, at the number OP is pointing at, that will be the angle here. Okay, it will be the angle. So, th that will give you the angle in degrees. Now, here they have taken an example. So, in the figure angle AOB, this one, angle AOB, open towards the left. In the figure 2, C, angle COD opens towards the right. Okay, so if you observe that angle AOB and COD are both 60 degrees. Okay, so as a rule, start counting from the zero of the circular scale. So, when it's opening from on the left side, okay, when the two arms are on the left side and they're opening on the left side, you start with the outer scale, okay. So, you always start with zero. So, zero here is on the outer scale. So, now here this line OB is at 60. So, this is 60 degrees. Same way here, since it is opening on the right side, start with zero. So, zero here is on the inner scale. So, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. So, CD is 60 degrees okay then fourth standard you have studied about different types of angles okay so let us revise that and move ahead so what are the different types of angles so you have an acute angle what's an acute angle acute angle measures between 0 degrees and 90 degrees so it is an angle which is greater than 0 but less than 90 degrees so here a or b shows an acute angle then right angle. So, what's an right angle? An angle which measures 90 degrees exactly is called as a right angle. So, here angle POQ is a right angle. Then an obtuse angle. When an angle measures between 90 and 180. So, it is greater than 90 degrees but less than 180 degrees. So, when the angle is less than 180 and greater than 90, then it is called as an obtuse angle. So, your angle ABC is an obtuse angle. Now, what's a straight angle? When the angle measures 180 degrees, then it is called as a straight angle. So, your LMN is a straight angle. If you see, it is a straight line. So, a straight line always has an angle of 180 degrees. Next, a reflex angle. What is a reflex angle? A reflex angle measures less than 360 degrees but more than 180 degrees. Okay, so the larger angle AOB is a reflex angle. When the angle measures less than 360 but more than 180 degrees and it is called as a reflex angle. So here angle AOB, this larger angle is a reflex angle. Okay. Then, an angle measuring 0 is known as a 0 angle. When an angle measures 0 degree, then it is called as a 0 angle. So, o, so here AOA is a 0 angle. Then, an angle which measures 360 degree is called as a complete angle. Okay, so this outer angle, okay, here o, AOA is a 360 degree angle which is called as a complete angle. So what are the different types of angles? You have acute angle, right angle, obtuse angle, reflex angle, straight angle, zero angle and complete angle. The zero angle and the complete angle are always named in the same way. But whereas the ray, ray remains without rema uh, rotation for the zero angle. The ray completes one full rotation 
and comes back to the initial position in the case of a complete angle. So for a zero angle, this re remains where it is, but for a complete angle, this uh, ray takes one full rotation and comes back to its original position. Okay. So these are the different types of angles. Let's see a few questions on these now. Okay. Now exercise 4.1 on page number 130 in your books. First one, measure the following angles and state the type. So what you have to do is now, you need to measure the angles. You all know how to measure the angles, right? So measure the angles for your homework and write the angles. We will discuss the type of angles now. So if you see this angle PQR, it is a little less than 90 degree, correct? So measure it and write the angles and degrees. For what type of an angle it is? Since it is less than 90 degrees, it will be an acute angle. Okay, it's an acute angle. Then angle LMN. So you clearly you can see that it is greater than 90 degrees. So what kind of an angle it is? It is an obtuse angle. Okay, so you can measure and write the angle here. Now EDE. Now if you see it is taking one complete turn and coming back here. Correct? So it is a complete angle. And of course, so this angle will measure 360 degrees because it's a complete angle. Then RTS, right? RTS, if you see the angle over here, it represents 180 degree angle and it is a straight angle. You can write straight angle here. Then ABC, what is the angle ABC here? Angle ABC is at acute angle. It is less than 90 degrees. And what about x, y, z? x, y, z here is uh, you can measure and write it. Okay. And I, I think it should either be 90 or less than 90. So it depends on that. If it is 90, it's exact 90. Then you can write it as a right angle. If it is less than 90, you can write it as an acute angle. So for your homework, measure the angles and write the angles for these four. A, B, C and F. Sorry, E and F. Now we'll move on to question number two. Look at the figures and name the following. So two pairs of parallel lines. So you need to write two pairs of parallel lines from this diagram. So what are the two pairs of parallel lines here? Now if you see AD and BC, they are at the same distance, right? And they are parallel to each other. Correct. So one pair is AD and BC. Okay, and another pair, if you see CD and AB here, okay, or DC and AB, both are parallel. So, DC and AB. So, these are two pairs of parallel lines. Then, two pairs of intersecting lines that are not perpendicular. So, you have to write two pairs of intersecting lines which are not perpendicular here. So, which are those two lines if you see? So, if you see here, DF and A are intersecting, but I don't think they are at right angle. So, you can write DF and A. Same way over here, CF and BE are also not intersecting at 90 degrees. So, they are also intersecting lines which are not perpendicular. Then, two pairs of lines that are intersecting and perpendicular. So which are the lines which intersect at 90 degrees over here? So, so, for two pairs of intersecting lines that are perpendicular, what you can do is, you can uh, try and measure two intersecting lines and see if they are uh, at a 90 degree angle and write those two pairs as the answer. Okay, and then two acute angles and two obtuse angles in this figure. That you can try to do for homework and write. So, two pairs of two acute angles and two obtuse angles that you'll find in this figure. Alright, so do that. Okay, so I'll give you one example for acute angle. So an acute angle here is the angle EAB. Okay, and one ang example for obtuse angle is angle ECB. So similarly, you can write one one other for 
examples for acute and obtuse anger. Okay, so complete your homework. In the next class, we will study what are types of triangles. Okay, thank you, students.